Hello. Thanks for taking the time to view this. Um, we'll see if this works out. This is my second run at this. And uh, I don't know if it's an issue with my camera or, or what, but uh, the last video that I had done, I ended up getting glitchy freezing in the video. The audio track was solid. I did upload it, um, but disappointing that the, uh, the video didn't work with it. And I just, uh, during this first run, got into about the minute mark and uh, it started glitching and freezing up again. So I uh, don't know what is causing it, but uh, it seems to be pretty much in line with the way a lot of things have been working uh, on the technological front for me. So, uh, if you haven't watched any of the other videos, this is your first one. Uh, just a brief catch up. I quit my job in property management at the beginning of May, May 2nd. Uh, today is July 26th. So, we're almost three months into me not being officially employed. I spent the first month of that uh, building an idea and getting set up for uh, a business, something I had been talking about, thinking about, working on for um, years and years, and uh, it's, it's, it's happened, I've done it, I've, I've got uh, my gluten-free concept YFGF up and running, and uh, it's, it's good, it's, uh, it's definitely allowed me to free myself a little bit. And um, I can't get the phone to sit still. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. I feel like I've been disruptive to all of my technological stuff. Um, left my job in property management and my laptop, which is was only a year old. I mean, just over uh, one year or, or one week out of the, the one year warranty period and uh, don't know what happened with it. It just stopped taking a charge and then it just was completely dead. Nothing. And um, this is driving me crazy. This is my default recording studio now that uh, I don't have the laptop but uh, shortly after that uh, the coffee maker broke down stopped working then my vacuum sealer stopped working um, again just glitchy don't know what's going on with it uh, my mixer KitchenAid mixer transmission housing on that split in half and wasn't holding the gears in there anymore I was able to fix that um, everything else I've just been going without of or, and uh, adapting, adjusting, making do with, uh, with what I've got and what's available. So, you know, that's all you really can do and try to maintain a certain level of positivity. And this is fucking pissing me off that I can't keep this straight. So I guess I'm just going to fucking hold it. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's running into these, these issues, these setbacks, hurdles that uh, I've had to overcome and surprisingly have been able to to maintain uh, everything. So we are staying afloat. We're, I mean, we're getting by. I'm not making any money, but I'm not really losing any money either. So, and we're building more of a following. So it's definitely been worth everything we've done. And, you know, this is going to be our ninth week of doing pop-ups. I spend about $100 per pop-up to get it up and running with uh, food costs and other supplies, propane, ice, things like that. And we're been having anywhere from $50 in sales to our biggest day was 250. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, actually the first weekend we did the, the winery and uh, that's been pretty good. Uh, we did uh, about a hundred and 30 in sales, 145 the second week at the winery and this past week, 100 and, 180. So 
I mean, we are making a little bit off of it, enough to, to keep us afloat and get us to the next event. And uh, I'm looking at trying to, to to take this to the next step. So I have a meeting today with, uh, with a local business owner in town who I've already established a, a bit of a working relationship with. Uh, I've been able to rent kitchen space uh, from her and uh, gonna maybe see what we can do or what I can do as far as a collaboration to maybe step this up a bit because it's not really enough to keep us going uh, going at this rate we either need to do more pop-ups per week or um, increase our sales at, at each one um, either way I mean, it's just basic business sense do what you need to do to to generate revenue so um, doing all that, uh, despite the the setbacks, I, like I said, I've been, I've, I've kept a pretty positive attitude and outlook towards everything, even though I, I have days, sometimes minutes, hours at a time, or what have you, where I'm just either in complete doubt or despair or fear that I'm just gonna fail and everything's gonna fall apart. Um, and every time something happens, like setting up our tent and having the wind snap two of the legs on it, uh, that, that's, that's a pretty big setback for us. Um, replacing that tent was an expense that uh, I didn't really want to have to take on, but uh, it was necessary. And we made enough money that week to cover everything and, and buy a new tent. So, you know, we're, like I said, we're, we're, we're getting by, we're staying above water. Um, which is great and every week we we seem to get more people that come by uh, as a repeat guest which has been great to see that um, some people are, are been to you know the last couple weeks have come to pretty much every pop-up which is twice a week right now that we're doing it looking at maybe adding a third or um, changing up the schedule on it a little bit maybe doing something where I can uh, run it solo where I don't have to have uh, my wife there is as a second body to to take care of some of the things we need to do but um it's been good um at this point right now i'm i'm, I'm struggling a little bit i uh i guess m mostly being affected by by fear um of of not being able to pay my bills and a little bit of doubt and a little bit of guilt about not being able to pay my bills. So, you know, we're three months into this. So, you know, I wasn't making a boatload of money in property management. I was, had gone back when I did and was, you know, making far less than what I was making when I was there the first time around. So, but I'm still making, you know, over $30,000 a year, which not having that income is a, is a pretty big loss. And we are, on the budget we're on with just our set expenses uh, my wife's income uh, which was more than mine uh, it still is uh, with our set you know bills that we have every month um, car payments rent insurance utility bills things like that things that are set in stone really don't have any fluctuation or give to them um, with her take-home pay we make I mean, just enough, a couple hundred dollars a month more than what that is. So uh, things like food and gas and bourbon and beer and vodka and the things that we consume on a, a regular basis and, you know, household supplies, soaps and cleaning supplies, things, you know, trash bags, stuff like that, that, uh, that we, that we need to, you know, live a functional life, uh, that's all coming out of whatever we get. We have not purchased groceries uh, since we started doing the pop-ups. Um, so our grocery budget has been eliminated, which is nice, and we spent quite a bit of money on groceries. Um, we're basically living off the leftovers from the pop-ups. Fortunately, I make stuff that I enjoy eating, which isn't much different than the stuff that I made every day for us anyway. I just make more of it now and sell it. So, 
it's been interesting um, trying to change the menu up every week uh, I make a decision after one pop-up what the next pop-up is going to be what the you know what menu what's gonna be on the menu and it's really based on what I can afford to purchase you know if we make if we make fit you know have fifty dollars in sales that gives me fifty dollars to put towards the next one and um, you know I have to pick and choose menu items that I can get the ingredients for to to make that happen and it's been a little nerve-wracking I've been a little stressed about it I'm tr try really hard not to let the the stress consume me and uh, just get past it I just keep telling myself over and over and over just the repetition it's gonna be fine everything's good this is working everything is as it should be we are gonna be fine this is all gonna pay off and I just need to keep some patience and and stay the course and there's days where I just I have I can't even tell myself that I just did and on those days I, I have trouble just getting out of bed and it's happened there's been a few days that are usually the day after uh, a pop-up especially one of the longer ones like the the Sunday uh, five-hour ones standing outside in a in a hot tent surrounded by cooking equipment you know it's 105 to 108 uh, degrees in their actual temperature plus where we are you know external temperatures the heat indexes are you know 110 so it's it's standing outside in the sun and sweating all day and and trying to maintain um hydration and and health but uh, there's a lot of times that the next day mondays are usually pretty difficult for me um I'm almost non-functional uh can't think straight um and in those uh periods of extreme fatigue is when a lot of the doubt and a lot of the fear and a lot of the the um the guilt comes along so uh you know i took a risk to to do this and it's been beneficial and i feel like it's it's paying off in more ways than i could explain but there's always well we have no safety net i don't know how else to 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 say that i mean we've exhausted every bit of uh, financial resources we've had so you know credit cards are maxed out we have already taken out uh, a couple loans i mean this was just prior to to us getting this up and going um but we have there's there's no there's no nest egg there's no there's no backup there's no you know if something happens it's going to be a financial issue and uh, we've been through those before and we've overcome them and it's that history that has helped me uh, maintain a bit of a more positive attitude towards all of this but there is a certain amount of guilt associated with not being able to meet your financial obligations um, and then you start judging yourself you start saying all right well I'm doing something wrong if I'm doing something that I enjoy but I'm not making enough money to meet my financial obligations then there's a, a certain guilt associated with that and it's been very difficult for me to deal with um, I don't really talk about it um, I was on the fence about even mentioning it during the video because I, I don't want to talk about it I just want to try and keep my mind focused on the steps following the steps and and taking what comes and if I follow the steps, if I create a menu for a pop-up that's coming in a couple of days and I buy all the stuff for it and I prep all the stuff for it and I set up the tent and operate during the, the hours that I advertised and make some sales and money will come and it has been. It, uh, I mean, there's always going to be that desire that you, you want it to be more and for us to be financially sustained it has to be more but it's actually moved well more more so than I thought in my head would have happened you know in the short period of time that I've been doing this so that's you know a, a, a plus a positive for that but you know s sitting here and looking at our bank account and and counting you know every 
cent that's in our accounts and that's coming and going and trying to make sure that uh, we've got enough money to you know pay the rent and pay the car payment and I'm, I'm developing a, a business relationship with this new management company that has taken over our our complex and you know, we're two weeks into that now so that's been a added a degree of difficulty but you know the last thing I want to do when I'm trying to create a, a working relationship with these people is be like hey you know what I can't pay my rent so uh, I'll let you know when I can and we went through that we've been through it before and we made do and we have made good on all of our our obligations and we got through it and uh, and now we're here and we're in a similar position again and it's battling my own demons and my own projections of well worthiness I guess on myself and and trying to keep that bullshit in check so that I, I not altering my reality in a, in a negative manner based on my negative thoughts. So it's just keeping um, you know, a certain level of pos positivity in mind. And I actually, it's been easier than I thought it would be. It's been easier for me this time around than it ever has in my past. Anytime I've, I've taken a chance or a risk to try and make something different happen in my life, I feel like my ability to survive is is has increased and it's it's made it easier so but that doesn't mean that there aren't difficulties I I, I do have difficulties I woke up this morning the first alarm went off at six o'clock and I woke up in a panic I felt like I was having a panic attack I was having trouble breathing I felt like my heart was racing and I was like how did I get myself into this how am I going to get myself out of it? I, I don't know what to do next. And I had to, it took some really heavy mental focus to, to remind myself that this is working. We are making it happen. We are not millionaires. We are not even well off, but we are making it happen and it is building. It is getting better every week we're getting more people following us, more people interacting with us, more people seeking us out uh, for what we're offering. And that is good. And that's what I need to remind me to keep me going and, and stay this course. Uh, the other option, and I'm getting really, really, really close to, to pulling the trigger on this one is getting a job somewhere else. And that's one of the last things I wanna do because if I'm committing time to somebody else's business, it's time that I'm not putting into mine. But, you know, we squeaked by this month. I had to make a payment arrangement to pay the utility bill, which was more than double what it normally is. One, because it's hot and the air conditioning's been running. So this is our first peak summer month in this area, but it's not much different than it was in San Antonio. Um, but I'm also using the oven more often. I'm using the, you know, the wash more often. I'm running the dishwasher more often. I'm washing more dishes. So we're using, you know, electricity for hot water. We're using electricity for the stove, the refrigerator. You know, I've been loading it up with stuff, and I don't know that it's making it better or worse with all that in there. But uh, in theory, the more stuff that you have in your refrigerator that's cold, the BTUs continue to generate and your refrigerator has to work less to do that but when it's packed so full you know the airflow doesn't get through it so I've had a couple of days where I was went in there I'm like wow everything on the bottom shelf seems warm today and then had to rearrange everything but I mean we make it happen um, I had to fix the mixer I was able to find a part to do that and uh, and get that fixed and I've just I've just went crazy off course here. I know I was talking about financial stuff, but I mean, this is just kind of how everything is right now. Everything is kind of chaotic and scattered everywhere. And it's my ability to find some kind of peace and, and pattern in the chaos 
that has allowed me to, to keep moving forward. But um, back to the financial thing, so you know, I had to make a payment arrangement to pay the electric bill. Um, I have to make a payment arrangement to pay the cell phone bill this month. So we squeaked by, we have, everything was covered. We had covered every single bill except for the cell phone bill and we were about 100 short of being able to pay that. And uh, I'll make a payment arrangement and I'll have to call them and then set that up to uh, be paid when uh, Rhonda's next check comes in, which will be you know, early on, first week of the month. But uh, that means we're going to be starting off August in the hole. We're going to be starting off uh, negative because we're paying one of July's bills out of August's income. So, you know, I need to make something happen in the next two weeks, whether that's uh, figure out a way to increase some sales. I can start putting maybe some higher price point menu items on. The last few pop-ups that we've done, we've served more people. We've sold more food, uh, but we've had lower price points. Um, we've picked items for the menu that, uh, for whatever reason, uh, either the lower cost of the ingredients or the lower uh, overhead needed to produce them. Um, I mean, that's the kind of things that I have to take into account every time I pick a menu. You know, what kind of equipment am I going to have to have? What supplies am I going to need to, to operate that equipment? So, you know, I'm running everything off of propane, and I do run a couple of things off of uh, electricity, but, you know, I have to take those, those things into account. You know, when we're doing the winery, if I have to take everything over there, we have to run a U-Haul. So that's an extra $30 out of our, our pocket to get everything over there. So the first week we did that. The last two weeks we have not. I've gone without the grill and uh, gone more with uh, portable burners and uh, my little portable flat top and my, my fryer. The fryer has been essential. Um, as much as I would like to do uh, a more health conscious menu, uh, the fried stuff is what sells. It's what people want. So uh, I always have to have the fryer with me. But I, you know, we can make it to the winery in two trips in our recording studio slash company vehicle here slash recreational everyday driver. Um, we make do. We make it happen. And now I'm just kind of blank. I'm not even sure where my whole train of thought went to. But um, you know, that's that's where. That's where we're at. Uh, I'm not going to drag this on. I wanted to try and keep these closer to the 20 minute mark and we're already creeping on 23 minutes. But, you know, that's a that's a pretty good update for, for where we are and what's going on right now. Uh, we're getting by and uh, I'm maintaining a positive attitude. And that's really, when you boil it down, the only thing that matters. And uh, I, I still try to live every day in that day and, and that's been another one of those things like reminding myself that everything's going to be all right that we're going to make it through this everything's going to be fine um the appreciation and the gratitude for for every day and and what i get to do and see and taste and feel it's been it's been good i mean it's a process and it's it's something that i have to keep in mind you know, waking up and, and looking out and uh, appreciating the natural surroundings. Getting up a couple days a week and going to the beach and just walking along the shoreline for 30 minutes to get our, uh, our morning walk in. Coming out in the evening and, uh, you know, breathing the night air and looking at the stars and staring at the moon and, you know, things like that. I mean, if there's things around you that uh, you just have to feel uh, appreciation for to be able to continue to get the things in life that you want and uh, being thankful for those things and showing appreciation for those things is, is it's necessary to, to, to continue doing um, what you do and, and have a happy life so you know just focus on the little things every day you know the only thing that matters is getting through the day and every night when I got through the day I'm like I get to lay down in a bed in an apartment with air conditioning and running water and it's comfortable and I have to remind myself that at the end of the day literally at the end of the day if I can lay down and relax in a comfortable bed in a place that I uh, am in possession of I mean 
I lease an apartment, but it is mine. I have the right to sole right to occupy that. Um, I'm living a good life, and that's just uh, the reminder that I have to keep giving myself that uh, it is a good life. I am happy. I have been doing the things in my life that make me happy. I enjoy making food. I enjoy watching people enjoy a well-prepared meal. I just, it's, it's part of who I am. It's, it's part of my drive in life and it makes me happy. So the financial bullshit aside, it's a necessary evil. It's something that I do have to take into account and monitor and, and maintain, but taking that out of the picture, everything is, it's perfect. It is perfect. Everything is exactly where, the way I would want it to be. So that's it. That's all I've got today.